Hey guys, Jose here, and today we're going to be talking about photography basics, so let's get right into it. So there's three things that you must know before getting into any kind of photography, and that's going to be your ISO, shutter speed, and your aperture. Each one of these settings are so important that if you were to just change one, go too far too low or too far too high, it's going to make the picture look completely different. So let's get started and learn about ISO and the reason why I want to get into that one first is because it's just the easiest to learn. Then we'll go to the other ones and then we'll end up at the color balance and also talking about lenses for a little bit. So if I had to say what ISO means to me or what it affects your camera, how it affects your camera, it's basically the brightness. Um, like literally you can just go on there, change the ISO and it would get really, really dark or really, really bright to where it's totally blacked out, almost totally blacked out if you're in that type of uh, light setting or if you're in the day and you set it up a little bit too high, it just completely white it out to where it's just totally sensitive to all the light that's coming in and just totally wipe out the camera, make it look just white. So ISO, the way it's measured, it's literally one of the lowest settings it has is 100 and then it'll go to 200, 400, 600, you know, and so on to thousands and thousands. But for the most part, you wanna keep it as low as you can keep it uh, based on where you are because it will make it to where your picture is less grainy if you keep it at a lower ISO. So basically 100 or 200, that's what I'm shooting at right now is that 100 at ISO because if you don't, like let's say you shoot at uh, 800 ISO or 1200 or whatever, you know, just anything higher than that, you'll start to kind of see a grainy picture to where um, you can see what's called noise and uh, you don't want that in your picture. You want it to look clear and crisp, uh, as clear as you can get it. So that was easy enough. ISO literally is just a brightness from 100 to thousands and thousands, and you just um, you know pretty much choose which one, but you want to stay at the lowest one. That's like the easiest way I can put it. So the next one I want to do is shutter speed. That one's also relatively easy, but it is not as easy as ISO because it does change two things instead of just changing one. What shutter speed does is it just tells your camera how fast to close the lens, uh, the sensor, and to be able to capture the image, okay? So basically if you set it at one one thousandth of a second, it's just going to be just like that, you know, just totally fast, faster than you can think, you, you know, as fast as, as fast as the camera can go, it'll, it'll just close it and uh, snap that picture. But at the same time, if you set it to one second, or you know 15 seconds or 30 seconds that's literally how long it's going to be open and be taking a picture until it finally closes it so it would take from you know whenever you click the button to whenever 30 seconds later is or whatever it is that you set it to that's how long it's going to be taking the picture of so it can capture some people moving or being in and out of the shot or a car passing by or a cloud with you know if it's or whatever it may be that's in that picture it's gonna capture that okay so it's gonna make it very blurry so that's the two things that you want to look at how fast you need the shutter like let's say you're shooting someone that's moving and you want it to be crisp and clear and just freeze that image or are you taking a landscape picture where you don't mind some movement being in the shot or maybe shooting light trails or certain things like that and so that's what shutter speed is gonna do for you so basically the second thing that it's going to do for you is change the brightness. It's kind of a, a weird thing. I didn't know that it would do that. I didn't. I really didn't know anything to begin with. But whenever you set the shutter speed to just really fast, you know, one one hundredth or one five hundredth of a second, it's going to make it darker. It just is. And you can, you know, mess with the camera if you have one. But it just, it's just going to do that, okay? And then when you go to a slower shutter speed, it's going to make it brighter. So if it's at one five hundredth of a second versus, you know, one second shutter speed, then it's going to be a lot brighter at one second shutter speed or even way brighter than that at 30 seconds of shutter speed. Okay. So that's what shutter speed can do for you. And you can use it in different applications. Like for example, if you're uh, during the day, you can get away with the faster shutter speed versus if you're at night, there's no way you can use a fast shutter speed at night. It's going to be way too dark, but at night you want to be able to take a, a better picture then you would use a slower shutter speed to get you a more, more light in that picture. Okay. And so you have to pick and choose what you need at certain times. 
whether it's during the day or at night, but shutter speed is going to do that for you. It's going to be either a freezing in motion or um, flowing uh, blurriness in the picture if you need it that way. Um, and it's also going to affect your brightness. That's what shutter speed is going to do. All right, guys, so now let's get right into aperture. So basically what aperture does is actually two things just like shutter speed, but the way it's measured is measured in f-stops, okay? So it would be, for example, 1.2, 1.4, 1.8. Each one's an f-stop, okay? Or 2.4, um, 4.5, and 6, and 10, uh, up to like 22 or whatever it's allowed to on the camera on the lens. And so that's how it's measured, okay? So whenever I say a very low aperture, I'm referring to, you know, like a 1.2 or a 1.4. Um, and so, like I said, these are called f-stops. Each stop uh, is an f-stop, and that's a setting that you can set it to to change what I'm about to explain to you here in a second. So now that you know how it's measured, let's look at a very low aperture versus a very high aperture, okay? The lowest aperture, all it's going to mean is the fact that the lens is going to be fully wide open as opposed to closed in. And what that's going to do is either allow a lot of light into the picture it literally will you can see it actually opening and closing okay and it will be totally open at the lowest aperture level or almost completely closed in at a very high aperture level so now that you know what how aperture is measured and what it does and like I said you know it allows more light so therefore it also changes the brightness this is another thing that you can use together with working with the ISO and the shutter speed. You know, changing your brightness is going to be a big deal. You know, sometimes you want to get a real good picture or uh, if you're in a dark situation, you need to get more light into the, into, the, into the camera. And so you do it by changing the ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture on the camera. So the next thing it's going to do is it's going to mess with your depth of field that's going to be in focus, okay? So your camera is always going to be in focus somewhere, or it might, you know, be trying to search for the focus. So you could actually manually focus it yourself, but it's always going to be in focus somewhere. So basically, if you have the lowest aperture, the depth of field is going to be very shallow. It's going to be from here to here, something very short. Um, and you can actually, you know, if you're if you're taking a picture um, and you have a very low aperture, from here to the back of your head, it can literally get blurry because the depth of field is so shallow. Okay, as opposed to if you have a very wide range of your depth of field, if you have a high aperture set, then you're going to have a very high range of field and it's going to be very uh, in focus from here to, you know, if there's a tree behind me or if there's something behind me, we're all going to be in focus if you have a very high aperture. Okay, but if you have a very low and shallow aperture and very um, short depth of field, it's just going to be me in focus. You know, the tree behind me, not going to it's going to be super blurry because it's just going to be me that's in focus at the time okay now that you know how aperture is measured and now that you know what it's going to do to your picture and how it's going to affect it we're going to be looking at lenses because it has a direct correlation to one another okay guys so check it out i have a lens with me right here and basically this lens i'm actually going to be reading what it says and right here it says 18 to 55 millimeter and then it also says um 3.5 to 5.6 that's the aperture that it's going to allow you to do okay so 18 to 55 is pretty much the distance between the sensor on the camera and the lens that's here and so it's going to tell you the millimeter size and how um, how much you can change and also the aperture um, range okay and so it'll tell you um, the lowest it can go is 3.5 and then the, the aperture, you can change it up to whatever your camera allows it to. But that's the lowest that this particular lens is going to go. Okay, now there might be different lenses out there that have the same um, zoom. You know, like for example, that was the um, 18 to 55. But it will have a different aperture number on there. Okay, and what that's going to mean is it's going to allow you to have a lower aperture, period. You know, because that one will not go lower than 3.5, okay? And the lens that I'm shooting with right now, it's actually a fixed 50 millimeter with a 1.4 aperture on it. And that's how low my aperture can go, you know? So basically, it's just going to tell you the um, focal length pretty much 
how much you can zoom in, and also how low you can go on the aperture number. Okay, and so most of the time, the lower you can go on the aperture number, the more it's going to cost because people want those portraits that have a very low aperture, a very shallow depth of field, so that you can, you know, take a good clean picture of the person and blur out the background. You know, so those are the ones that are more sought out for, and the more expensive ones too. And so basically, you want to look at. Um, Yes, the the zoom, how much is going to allow you to zoom or whether it's a fixed lens or not, and how low the aperture on that lens is going to be. Those are two really important things. Of course, there's different lenses for everything. For example, if you need to be taking pictures of people versus pictures of uh, wildlife or landscapes, you're going to be looking at different lenses to use at the time. And so, you know, for 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 example, this one that I'm using right now is a 50 millimeter 1.4, and that's very good for portraits. Versus if I'm shooting wildlife or something that's really far away, um, basically gonna go with the highest zoom I can get. Um, if I'm not gonna be anywhere close to a uh, bird or whatever, you know. And then let's say I need to shoot a very wide picture, then you would go with a lower number on the millimeter size. So like uh, right now I'm using the 50 millimeter. And um, this would be a lot lower, the 18 millimeter. And then a 10 millimeter would be even wider than that. So there's different uses for different lenses also. And now really quick, the white color balance is basically, it's just that. It's how your camera is going to balance colors, okay? So there's red, green, and blue, and even, you know, some cameras will show you that and can have you change that. Or they'll have a, um, a number on it to where you can actually uh, scroll through it and it'll show you you know like literally just a, someone's skin color it'll show you like a really pale color if you go really low on it or really high on it it'll show you like a really um, orangey or tan because it's changing pretty much with like the color temperature and so that's what it's gonna do and that's uh, the simplest way to put it you can just mess with it back and forth and see how it's gonna take pictures of, um, of people or uh, of being inside or outside and that's something that you're going to change with every shot too. So literally everything that we just talked about, you're going to be using every single time that you're using a high level camera to do any kind of photography. And it's really hard to get along through all this without knowing how to do that. You know, if you want to do photography of any kind, you're going to need to know how to do all this stuff. So now on camera, you know, you might say, oh, I never knew any of that. Or I know a bunch of people that take pictures and they don't know any of that. And that's true, I didn't know that either, but your camera actually has an automatic setting where it kind of just changes everything for you, and then you can, you know, uh, zoom in and out, and it'll actually change the aperture for you, it'll change the uh, shutter speed for you, or you can change it to portrait, or you can change it to landscape, or you can change it to sports, and it will change those things for you. But the way that you do it to make a, to where you have all the control of all these settings is you go to the manual settings, and then from there you can have full control over the ISO, full control over the zoom, the aperture, and the shutter speed. So whatever situation you're in, you know where you're going to be taking, so you don't want to put it to automatic or a sport or whatever, um, because you want to have full control of everything, of the lighting, of the uh, depth of field, and you know uh, the color balance can be changed at any time, but you want to have full control of all these things that we've talked about today. So there you have it, guys. I hope I covered everything well. If I don't, let me know. I will do my best to, to try to explain it to you. But that's pretty much the basics of it, and that's what you need to do and need to start practicing on if you want to get into any type of photography in the future. So thank you for watching, and see you later.